Welcome aboard Pacific Adventure. This Grand Class cruise ship joined the P&O Australia fleet in 2022 to become a permanent fixture in the Sydney cruise market. The ship is 290 metres long, features 12 passenger decks and has a gross tonnage of 108,865, meaning there is a massive amount of space to enjoy aboard. So let's go aboard Pacific Adventure to check out what makes this ship a much loved member of the P&O fleet. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Chris Freeman. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a maritime history author and lecturer. I'm also the co-host of the Big Cruise podcast. I'll link in the description. If you like cruising, cruise ships and maritime history, I think you're going to like it here. So hopefully you'll subscribe at the end of the video. Let's start our tour at the very top of Pacific Adventure. Towering above the ship, you'll find the twin racer water slides. These giant slides offer a fast and fantastic slide experience. And unlike many water slides, there is a joined area where you can see the person you're racing, hence the name Twin Racer. From this vantage point, you can see the Altitude Nightclub. So let's head there. Listed as Deck 17 and Deck 18 on the deck plans, this area is a raised and enclosed observation lounge accessible through a long glass-clad tunnel. There's an escalator in the tunnel to make the trek up to the nightclub a little bit easier. The nightclub acts as a quiet lounge by day and offers sweeping views over the aft of the ship. This unique space was one of the key features of the Grand Class design. Though only a few examples remain today, as many of the Grand Class ships in the Princess fleet have had this removed. Forward of altitude, you'll find twin hot tubs on deck 16, as well as a sunset bar. Keep going forward to find the Byron Beach Club, which provides a quiet and relaxing sanctuary for passengers in this grade of accommodation. The Beach Club surrounds a private pool area, which itself is encircled by a spa and fitness centre that's open to everyone. The spa facility is run by Elemis and includes several massage rooms, a hairdresser and beauty salon, saunas, steam rooms and a well-equipped gym. Tall people will delight with the higher than usual ceilings in the fitness centre. Head aft of the spa to find the kids and teen facilities. P&O Australia have three styles of youth entertainment. Turtle Cove for the little kids, Shark Shack for the big kids and H2O for teens. The midships area of Deck 15 is home to the big screen where movies are shown as well as a Magra Dome covered leisure area that overlooks the large family pool on the deck below. These areas are linked, so let's head down to Deck 14 to check out the facilities. The sheltered pool area is a great place for families to enjoy a swim, regardless of the weather outside. There are hot tubs as well as a nearby Magrodome bar that serves drinks. Forward of this, back in the open air, you'll find the main pool. This is a popular location aboard the ship and is served by a bar for drinks while burgers can be had at Luke's. The New Zealand Natural Ice Creamery is found on the opposite side of the pool area. Head aft and you'll find yourself in the pantry, P&O's take on an alternative to the traditional cruise ship buffet. The pantry serves a variety of food styles, but rather than one long buffet queue, you can approach the various counters and request the various dishes. Cuisines here include Indian, Asian, fish and chips, Mexican and a carvery, as well as the ever popular sugar bar where the desserts are. The pantry opens out to the adults only oasis at the aft of the ship. Despite the boxy appearance of Pacific Adventure, the design at the aft allows for three terraces that overlook the oasis pool on deck 12. Yep, that's right, there's no deck 13 on this ship as it seems like superstition at sea is still a thing. Aside from the oasis pool, deck 12 is a domain of accommodation, and the same can be said of deck 11 through deck 8. The cabins aboard Pacific Adventure vary in size and style from large and spacious suites to balcony cabins, standard outside rooms with a window or a porthole, and inside cabins, which are the most affordable way to travel. The ship also offers numerous accessible rooms.
Deck 7 is where a lot of the action can be found. Starting at the aft, the Black Circus is one of the ship's show lounges. The bulkheads are decorated with cabaret-style imagery, while modest terrace flooring allows for a collection of comfortable seating. Black Circus is home to quizzes and bingo during the day, as well as the specialty shows in the evening. Dragon Lady is accessible from the aft stairway just outside Black Circus, and the decor around the stairway on Deck 7 is decked out in the same Asian-inspired theme as the restaurant. Here you'll find delicious dishes that vary from a variety of Asian cuisines, making this a very popular dining choice for no extra charge. Head back to Deck 7 and pass through the Images Photo Gallery to access Trattoria, once known as 400 Gradi and where the decorators do believe that hexagons are the bestagons. This is one of the extra tariff restaurants offering pizzas, making it a popular area with travellers. Just next door, the Blue Room is Pacific Adventures Jazz Club. It is decorated in dark blue and black hues, offset with white pillars and striking black and white imagery on the bulkheads. It is a busy venue in the evenings and stays open late. Amidships on Deck 7, the Adventure Hotel is the ship's take on an Aussie beachside pub. It is a large space with seating scattered about the room, as well as comfortable booth seating along the forward bulkhead. A dance floor and stage are offset to the port side, providing a great multi-purpose use for this area. Moving forward, and the traffic flow is directed to the starboard side, where the ocean bar spills out around a large atrium well. The atrium spans three decks, and from this deck 7 vantage you can look down towards the lowest level on deck 5. Some of the ship's shops are found here on the port side while others are situated one deck below. They offer a selection of clothing, jewellery, gifts, watches and P&O branded items and soon should be selling our book, A Photographic History of P&O Cruises, which has just been updated for its second edition. Head forward to enter the gigantic casino which occupies the entire width of this deck, sans the promenade on the outside. The casino has gaming tables, slot machines and a bar that leads through to the forward stairwell lobby and the upper level of the Marquis. The Marquis is the name of P&O's main show lounge. Aboard Pacific Adventure, it spans two decks and has great sight lines thanks to tiered seating. There's a big stage, modern sound and lights, and even a bar on the lower level. Surrounding Deck 7 is the ship's outdoor promenade. Faux wood decking aside, this space is a superb feature for any ship and really allows for a proper nautical experience. What I love about Pacific Adventure is the promenade goes to the very tip of the bow thanks to a slightly raised forward promenade area. This offers a truly magnificent view with nothing ahead of you. Back indoors and Deck 6 is where you'll find Luke's Bar and Grill. Situated on the port side, its close proximity to the marquee makes it a good choice for dinner before a show for an extra tariff. The atrium passes through deck 6 and it's here where you'll need to go to visit the guest services desk, which was absolutely packed with passengers when I tried to film the area. It's a modern name for the purse's office, where you can get help with any of the services being offered aboard the ship. More shops surround the atrium while the entry to Angelo's, Pacific Adventures Italian restaurant, can be found on the port side. Angelo's serves tasty pastas and other Mediterranean-inspired dishes, making it a popular place that requires a reservation, though there is no extra charge. Right below Angelo's is Waterfront. This has been the name of P&O Australia's main dining venue since 2009, and is shared across all ships of the fleet. It is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You can make a reservation or just rock up whenever hunger strikes. But if the space is busy, which it often is, you may be given a buzzer to alert you to when your table is available. If that is the case, you may want to visit Charlie's or Lily's, two of the bars just forward of the waterfront. These spaces are joined by Avalon Cafe, which is popular with coffee lovers, and the location where I was spotted by a subscriber for the first time ever. So a big shout out to the team at Avalon. These bars and cafes surround the Deck 5 lobby, which is also the lowest level of the atrium.
Forward of this is the destination lounge, where short tour groups meet before departing the ship. There's one other space that I should mention, and that's the medical centre on deck 4. But none of us want to go there, so let's head back to the top of the ship and take in these amazing views instead. Pacific Adventure has proven herself to be a popular ship in the P&O Australia lineup. Her addition to the Sydney cruise market showcases P&O Australia's unique connection with the city. In fact, Pacific Adventure's funnel was even shortened to allow her to pass under the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge, something that she couldn't achieve when she was sailing as Golden Princess. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for future cruise and maritime history content. Thanks once again for watching. Until next time, I hope to see you on board.